Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, we're going to talk about what I believe are the most misunderstood and least used group of adjustments that are in Lightroom. I'm talking about the adjustments that are in the Calibration tab. Now, I believe that they're not used that much because many photographers really don't understand what these adjustments do. But really, once you understand what the calibration does, the calibration tab does, I think it will open a lot of creative possibilities up for you. And it will do some practical things as well. For example, it will correct a color cast in an image. Now, to really understand the calibration tab, we have to talk about cameras for a second. Let's just pretend that you come upon a scene and you're filthy rich and you have three different cameras from three different manufacturers. So you have a Canon camera, you have a Sony camera, you have a Nikon camera, and you take the same exact photo with all three of those cameras. What you'll find when you look at the RAW files is that each of those images will be slightly different. The colors will be slightly different, and the highlight shadows, ultimately the contrast between each of those images will be a little bit different. That's because each of those manufacturers use a specific type of what is ca commonly called a color science for that camera. More specifically, it's really a camera profile. You may hear, have heard in the past that a lot of photographers might say, I really love Canon's color science or Canon's color profile or Nikon's color pro profile or whatever. Now in the earlier days of digital photography, uh, digital cameras really just had one color profile. So Nikon cameras had their color profile, Canon had theirs. A little later on, even Sony, they just had one, maybe two, in the early days of Sony cameras. So you had just one camera profile for all these different cameras. And that's why a lot of people grew attached to a specific brand, because they liked the color from that camera. And, you know, it's subjective. It's not really an objective thing. And nowadays... Uh, cameras have multiple profiles built in. Now, for example, if we go up to the basic tab of Lightroom, we have a profile browser. And if I open up that profile browser, you can see that there's all different types of profiles. There are profiles that are just Adobe profiles, nothing to do with the camera manufacturer. These are just Adobe profiles. And if I hover over them, you'll see that with each profile, the colors change slightly and the contrast, the highlights and shadows, they change just slightly too because the profiles are different. And if you're working with a RAW file in Lightroom, you'll also have the camera matching profiles as well. This image was shot with a Fuji camera. So we have different profiles and you can see the colors change slightly, the pro, uh, contrast change slightly and so on through those different profiles. So we have profiles. It's really just how the colors are interpreted by the camera or the camera manufacturer. Now, as you probably know, a color image is a mix of red, green, and blue. And let's just say you have those same three cameras and you take a photo of a red brick wall and it's just saturated red. If you look at the, you know, theoretically, if you looked at those three images from the three different cameras, they should look identical. But likely they won't. The color red will be slightly different between those three cameras. So the U will be shifted a little bit between the three cameras. And not only that, the brightness, nothing to do with the exposure. Let's say you just had perfect exposure on all three cameras. The brightness of the actual red brick wall will be slightly different. And the saturation of the red will be slightly different. That's what that color science is. It's how the camera manufacturers interpret a color for you, saturation and brightness. And then when a color photo has a mixture of red, green, and blue, it tends to make it look different compared to another camera manufacturer's. What you could do is you could tweak all of that with the calibration tab. For example, uh, I have this image here and you could see that it's got a blue sky, right? Well, you would think I could go up to the blue primary and bring saturation down and it would just pull out the color in the blue sky or maybe push it up and it would just saturate the blue sky. But you can see it's affecting every single color. That's because this color image is a mixture of red, green, and blue. So when you adjust the saturation of the blue primary, you're adjusting 
blue everywhere in the mix. So even though this like um, building doesn't isn't blue, but that color has blue mixed in it. So when you change the saturation, you're affecting that everywhere. If you want to target blue, you should go to the HSL panel. Then you could go to the saturation, go to the blue slider, and then you'll just mainly affect the blue sky, right? And the water with that. So that's to target that specific color. If I want to target those red bricks, I could go to the red or maybe even the orange would be a better choice. You could see how it's just targeting those bricks. So you could target specific colors with the HSL panel, but when you actually want to adjust the mixture of colors, then you go to the calibration tab. Now, I mentioned that you could do some practical things also with the calibration tab. And one is remove a color cast. This image has a distinctive blue color cast. And most often you'd probably go up to the basic Tamil, uh, panel and you'd go to the white balance, right? And you could try auto and it's way too warm now, right? Go to daylight. It's a little better, all right? Cloudy, it's way too warm. Shade's gonna be even warmer and so on. So we're not nailing it with that. Uh, we could try the uh, eyedropper and what you wanna do is click on a neutral color and I'll click on the white of this, like whatever that is. And that actually isn't bad, but it still isn't perfect. It's just kind of off a little bit. It still looks odd. It just doesn't look like it looked when it was there, when I was there. What you could do is you could use that white balance adjustment to get you close, then go to the calibration tab. And let's say, you know, I could try to move these saturations around. Most often you're not going to want to use the, move the hue slider around for this, but you could get it to be a little bit more um, like it actually was when you were there. And that looks better. That looks like it was a, it was a summer day. It was actually a spring day. There were no boats yet in, in the, on the docks, but it was an early spring day and it was sunny out and it looked more like that. Maybe there's just a little bit too much red in there. I could pull that back and that looks a lot better. So that's how you could, uh, correct something practical with your image, like a color cast. But as I mentioned, uh, a lot of times we want to do some things creative here. So we could go to an image like this. And if you go to the calibration tab and we go to blue primary, now it's not, do you see any blue in this image? Not really, right? But if I go to the saturation tab, I start moving it to the right. Look at the greens and the yellows all getting more saturated. And I've often, um, in the past, I've done a couple of videos where I talked about single slider photo pop. And that's the saturation slider of blue primary. If you move it to the right, you tend to make a color image just pop more. And you can see that it really is making those colors pop. So if you ever have an image that looks a little drab, come to the calibration tab and move this blue primary slider to the right. Now, if the green still looks like maybe it's a little too much, maybe you could take some of the green down uh, like that, but you could see how it still kind of makes everything pop a little better. And then you could uh, uh, mess around with the saturation. Now on top of that, uh, we have these U sliders as well. Let's go to another image that has a lot of blue in it. That's this one. Now we have this uh, blue primary. Now if I look at, you know, the sky's blue, the water's blue. If I move this to left, we're making the blues more cyan. If I move it to the far right, we're making the blues more magenta. So you can see how we could change that hue slightly. So if you don't like the hue of something, if it doesn't look like it actually looked when you took the photo, that's when you're going to want to come in and move the hue slider around. Uh, often if you take an image and the colors just look off, because again, these are a mixture of red, green, and blue, come to the calibration tab and move some of these hue sliders around. And you'll see if you could get a better um, representation of what that scene was actually like when you were there. Like for this specific image, it, it was a nice, beautiful summer day and um, we were at Niagara Falls, obviously, and it just wasn't this blue though, right? So I could come in and I could move some of this around a little bit to try to change the hue a little bit of um, the mixture of red, green, and blue, the way the hue is mixed together, and just make it look a little bit more uh, realistic like it was when I was there. So you could come and do that. That's another practical application of these adjustments that are here. Now, 
Sometimes when you take images, the shadows will have usually kind of a bluish tint in them. And what you would do is you would go to the shadow slider and you would move this to the left. It will just take that blue that might be in the shadows part of the image away. And that is just a real subtle adjustment as well. Now, one last thing about the calibration tab, and this I don't often use, but um, over the years, Lightroom had different pr um, processing engines they used. And they've updated it throughout the years. You know, you could see these version 4, 3, 2, 1. For example, if I go to version 1, if I go up to the basic tab, you could see that we have exposure, recovery, fill light, blacks. So all this changed because that was, uh, those were the adjustments that were used in the original versions of Lightroom. I think up to uh, Lightroom 3, if I'm not mistaken. So you have these adjustments. So we don't often want to go back and use older adjustments because uh, typically, uh, usually with manufacturers, as they update a uh, software, they're updating it so that it works better. So these um, adjustments, these calibration versions, these process versions change. You can see here we still have the um, exposure recovery fill light. That actually I think was in uh, Lightroom 3, that one, if I remember right. Then we go to version 3. And this, I think, uh, debuted in um, Lightroom 4. And you can see we have the typical highlight shadows, whites and blacks, and so on. So that's that drop down there. Now, typically, you're always going to use the one that has current next to it. And that's what you'll want to use. And then you could adjust your image accordingly. So the calibration tab, remember, it's really just how the colors are interpreted on in a, in a raw file or a JPEG or TIFF or anything really. So you have blue. Well, what is the exact hue of blue? If you want to shift that exact hue of blue, you could shift it here. But remember, it shifts it in the mix as well, where blue is mixed with red and green to make a specific color like the cliff wall over here. So you're going to adjust all that color as well when you adjust that hue. Um, if you want to adjust the saturation too of those individual colors, red, green, and blue, you can do that as well. So hopefully that will help you um, use the calibration tab in a more creative way and also in a more practical way as well. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.